Since my video on Pink Tinted Love, a mod that is all about the connection that Sunny and Aubrey form after the game's true ending, a new chapter has released. It is titled Of Bread and Honey, which alludes to what story will unfold within this chapter. Before the video starts, I just want to remind y'all that I usually stream on Twitch, mostly speedruns, but you can also catch me playing Immortal Mods on occasion. I'd really appreciate it if you drop a follow on there, but you don't have to. Also, I want to drop a reminder that I have channel memberships enabled. If you want a shout out at the end of my videos, as well as exclusive posts and early access to new videos, then pledge your support with just $3 a month. If you can't do that, it's okay, I understand. Liking, subscribing, and commenting helps me just as much. Without further ado, enjoy the video! But before the video actually starts, have you ever wanted to feel more confident and fresh? Whether to just feel better about yourself, enjoy a relaxing sweat-free day, or to prepare for an outing with somebody special? To be more comfortable in your own skin? Well, too bad! I can't believe you fell for that. This video isn't sponsored by anybody. So, um... I had to go back a little bit ago and replay through the game because uh, the Chapter 2 update includes achievements, um, and I didn't have any of them despite beating Chapter 1 because, you know. An assortment of pictures taken over the last two years. Some of your happiest memories are recorded here. Chief among them are the ones that happened after you and Aubrey started dating over a year ago. Look at the pictures. Which memory would you like to reminisce about now? 3rd of July. You start thinking back to the day Hero visited far away while you were there. Hale was asking you for your help with welcoming him, not unlike that day a year before. Hey, you know that Hero's coming today, right? You nod at him. He's mentioned this a few times during your visit, but you hadn't realized today was already the day. I need to clean some stuff here at home. You think you could stop by Other Mart to buy some ju juice and a few sodas? Sure. I don't know if I have enough money on me, though. I can borrow some from my room. There should be enough for a few boxes. I'll just finish putting some stuff back into place, and we can all hang out when you get back. You look around Kel's wardrobe and find a $10 bill. You honestly expected more? <laughs> you got Kel's $10. He spent the other 10 Oh. Sonny, can you get it for me? Can you get the door for me? Why is... Why is Kel offset? What the frick? Morning, Sunny. Did you sleep well? Good morning, Aubrey. I'd like to say I got used to kill snoring, but... Yeah, don't even mention it. Last week's sleepover felt like a torture chamber. Speaking of, where is he? I thought we were all going to hang out today. Inside, he's tidying up the house for when Hero arrives. Wait, it's already today? Dang, time flies. I'm going to other ride to buy some juice for him. Want to come with me? You even have to ask? <laughs> You're right. Maybe we can stop by Basil's place as well. He's usually up by now. What? What? <laughs> why? Why is he so far away from the door? Oh, hey guys. Good morning. Morning, Chris. What are you up to? Fourth of July is tomorrow, so my dad is super pumped about that. I'll probably spend the whole day setting stuff up with him and mom. Sounds like fun. No, wait. How much stuff do you even have to set up for the Fourth of July? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Well, guess we'll leave you to it, then. Have fun. Thanks. Enjoy your 10th date this week. <laughs> oh, hello there, you two. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Polly. Is Basil up? I'm sorry, but he's still asleep. Yesterday night, he asked me to brew some strong camel toli ha camomile tea, and he's been out since. He seemed pretty anxious about something. You two wouldn't happen to know what it could be? Sorry, I have no clue. Could you tell him we stop by when he wakes up? Maybe we can talk it out of him. Of course, thanks for coming here. Have a nice day! Hmm, what could it be that's making Basil so anxious? If it was something serious, wouldn't he tell us? I hope so. Maybe it's because Hero is coming today? Oh. Either way, we should be fine if we all just talk it out. Hey, since it's still pretty early, how about we stop by at the hangout spot for a bit? What the? What is happening over here? We're helping set things up for the festival. Oh, there's a festival? 
Hello, dearies. I'm overseeing the preparations for this year's 4th of July festival. Hope you enjoy! Oh, okay. Ow. Oh, I, I guess the cats have given up on world domination. Actually, that might not be in this game. I might be mixing up my mods. Which would be really funny, honestly. My key broke inside the lock. I already called a locksmith, but it might take a while. Various juice boxes and soda bottles present themselves. For a second, you ponder the possibility until remembering who you're buying this for. Hey, leave some orange juice for the customers. You're right. Do you want to pick one for yourself? Apple juice is fine. Thanks, Sonny. You went to the counter and paid for the various beverages. You lost Pezzles $10. No, dude. I'm buying some vitamin supplements for myself. I've been losing weight for a few months now, but I still have a long way to go. Oh my gosh. So happy for him. Oh, hello. Hello, guys. Ah, oh, so sorry about that. Hmm. <clears throat> hi there, you two want anything? We're just here to say hi. Where are your siblings? You don't usually stay at the counter. Bone is helping prepare stuff for the festival, and Daphne took the day off. She said she had some important plans for today. Good for her, then. And you? Not gonna visit the festival with your girlfriend? What do you take me for? After my shift is over, I'll stop by her place. Until then, I'll be here selling bread, in case you want to, you know, buy it. Good luck then, see you later. I love that Maverick had just been convinced to be bread. The same two cans that are always together. You meow at them, but they seem interested only in each other. <laughs> How cute. The sun feels so right nice right now. It really does. Maybe you could get a little tan with this. You know I just get sunburned every time. Yeah, yeah, I was just joking. As long as you're not pale as back then, I don't mind. I don't know to think about it. I don't even like tan guys. That does make my life easier. Poor Kel, though. Come on, you know I didn't mean it like that. Kel's a great friend. But I also wouldn't ever date him in, like, a billion years. Oh! Blood Force held head trauma enjoyers are crying. You're the only one for me, Sonny. No one else comes close. Thanks. That's very sweet. Honestly, I don't think I've ever considered dating anyone other than you, either. Heh. <laughs> Man, we are so corny. Sometimes this feels too good to be true. Almost like it's in a mod created by somebody. Oh, too good, huh? It does feel like that. Say, Aubrey, do you think that if things were different, we would have still worked out? Different, huh? Purple hair. What? 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 <laughs> Whoa. I always liked you, even after everything with Mari. Maybe if you had really disappeared from my life for good, then one day I might have gotten over it. That's not what you did. You came back for us. So I think that as long as these feelings are still there, is is this just showing like every single AU possible and Aubrey and Sunny are always together like this? Even this with gender bent, they're still together. As long as we got to talk about them and be honest with ourselves, why are they in the church? Would still pull through for sure. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Thanks for giving it some thought. Don't mention it, you're my boyfriend after all. Though I think we should probably go get Kel, those juice boxes now. Go get Kel, though. go give Kel, I don't know. Hey, you're back! And Aubrey's with you too! Sup, here's the juice you asked for. Thanks. And since you guys probably stopped somewhere to smooch, I managed to finish cleaning everything. Hey! We didn't even take that long! I was just a peck. You're not helping, Sonny. Eh, and you still said me and Chris were too clingy. Here, I'll take these and put them in the fridge. Then we can go and go get Basil. S suit yourself. Done. Let's get going. All right. Hold on. Very important thing. Oh. A lost box from the handyman, marked with yellow tape. You got lost box. Oh. Babel! Oh, you guys are already here. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning, dude. Polly told me you two stopped by earlier, so I rushed here to finish tending to my flowers. We can all go and hang out now. That's great, Basil, but... We, when we talked to Polly, she said you were a little stressed out last night. Is everything okay? Yeah, 
You know you can talk to us if there's anything I'm bothering you, right? Uh, oh, so, so she told you guys about that, huh? Well, Polly is going to sell some of our flowers at a stand in the festival today. I have too many, and some of them can reproduce pretty easily, so we're going to sell some of the excess. I know it's really silly, but that kind of got to my head pretty bad. I started worrying if they were good enough to sell, or that all the effort she was putting in would be for nothing. Even though she didn't need to stay around after Grandma passed away, she insisted on being here for me. I don't want to make things harder for her. Say, Basil, is Polly like your mom now? Uh, what? Where did that come from? I mean, she's been raising you for how many years now? Hell's right, you know. Ugh, I hate that I've been saying this more lately. Point is, she's been there for you all this time, even when she didn't have to anymore. I doubt one inconvenience or another would change that. So, you know, instead of being scared of this or that, just tell her how thankful you are every now and then. Thankful, huh? Thanks, guys. I think I've cleared my head a bit now. You're welcome, bro. We're here for you, dude. Yeah, you can count on us. Enough of me moping around then. Let's go check out the festival. With your friends gathered together, you can now visit any one of their homes. Perhaps other people's as well. Really? Large comfy bed. Holly is living here now, so I convinced her to get a nicer bed. Is that Walkman hers? It looks so new and cool. Yeah, she likes listening to music while we tend to the plant plants together and make food. She says her favorite right now is a cover of The Man Who Sold the Planet by Midge Uri. Oh, I know that one. It came up on the radio once. A mirror being in this bathroom still makes you uneasy. You'd rather leave. <laughs> That's pretty fair. Basil's trusty old camera. Next to it is a bottle of prescription medicine. You've been taking them too, right, Sonny? Yeah. I don't like that I have to, but if this is what it takes to get better. As far as I can tell, you two improved a lot after you started taking them. Sonny talks way more now, and Basil looks a lot less anxious. For the most part, anyways. Thank you. I think I'm starting to enjoy talking to people now. Yeah, thanks, Aubrey. I have been feeling a lot better about myself, too. I was always so on edge back then. I guess I showed it, huh? Me bullying you sure didn't help. It's alright now. Don't beat yourself up over it. Oh, it's been a while since last time I came here to help you, Aubrey. How's a pro- oh, oh, Madonna! Hi. It's still not really what I wanted, but I'll let you see for yourself. I think it's been a good few years since I last visited your house. I can't say I'm not curious to see it. I'll probably be a little disappointed. But if this was a year ago, you'd be very disappointed. Don't beat yourself over it. What you did was already incredible. Alright then. Dude, this is amazing. You made so much progress since last time. How'd you even get those stains out? I don't really know what it looked like before, but to me, your house looks just fine, Aubrey. I told you there was no reason to be ashamed. You guys are too nice to me, you know? I am your boyfriend, after all. I should be at least that. Dork, you know you are more than just nice to me. Um, can you guys leave the flirting for a little later? I don't mind it that much. I think it's cute. Sorry, I got carried away. Everybody plays with Bun Bun. Yes! Hey, he beat my finger really hard. Really? He usually just nimbers mine. Oh! Really? He usually just nipples mine pretty gently. He's been pretty docile with me as well. Sorry, Kel. I bet Arby taught him to do that. Hey, I wouldn't... Okay, I admit that is something I would have done two years ago. Don't worry about it too much, Kel. Animals are pretty unpredictable. Mew will never stop scratching me until... My... Father took her away. I guess you're right. Hell, for what it's worth, I'm sorry he bit you. Thanks. I'll try not to let it get to my head. <laughs> but one bun just doesn't like Kel. What? A love letter sits on the table. The font says, from Karen to scene. Looking closely, it's dated from yesterday. Writing each other love letters despite being married and living together. You make a mental note of that! <laughs> <laughs> An open book. You flip to the cover and see Scene and Perrin's Married Life Journal written on it. You sure we should be peeking through this? Well, if they didn't want anyone reading it, they wouldn't leave it like this, right? I guess you have a point. What do you think, Sonny? It's your call. Read through their Married Life Journal. 
29th of June. Today's scene made a bubble bath for me, and we got in together. We flooded the floor a bit, but it was so relaxing. You can always tell when I'm stressed out from the pregnancy. <laughs> bubble baths, huh? You make a mental note of that! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> 30th of June. When I came back from work, Karen laid me down on her lap and ran her fingers through my hair. I was resting my ear against her belly, and I know it's too early, but I swear I could feel a kick. What am I reading? She's like, he was really excited for that baby, huh? I remember before Sally was born, my dad was a bit like this. 1st of July. Today, Karen woke up craving fish fillets, so I bought some and we cooked together. She looks so happy eating it. 1st of July, second entry. Today, I woke up really hungry for some fish, so Seen rushed off to Other Mart and bought me some. This was the best fish I ate in my entire life. I love Seen so much, I want to kiss him all over. <laughs> he is so devoted to her. I find that admirable. 2nd of July. Karen woke up with nausea, so we just stayed in bed for most of the day watching TV. She seemed to have dozed off pretty quick, but out of nowhere, she started kissing me on the neck and- Um, okay, that's enough. <laughs> You make a final note of the things you've read here. Really? Why? <laughs> Why is there a sock on the floor? That's a sock, right? That's a sock, right? Anybody else know about the... No oh, hey, an another lost box. Good morning, everyone. I'm tending to the flowers right now. Speaking of, thank you again for guiding, gifting them to the church, Basil. I'm sure the Lord appreciates your generosity. Don't mention it. I'm glad everyone seems to have liked them. They have indeed. After I'm finished here, I'll be joining everyone at the festival, so I'm leaving the church closed for today's afternoon. Can I go in? No, oh, let me in. No one is home right now? I thought Daphne took the day off. Chris! Oh, hi guys, and Kel's here too. Just in time, honey. Can you help me out? My dad ended up spilling a bucket of water all over the fireworks we bought for tomorrow. I think they sell some at Hobbies this time of year. Can you go and get some for me? The kind that you don't need a permit to buy, obviously. And there goes my pyrotechnic aspirations. <laughs> of course, Chris. You can count on me. We're kind of short on money, though. Don't worry. I have a 20 on me. Shouldn't be more than this. You got $20. Get the change, big boy! Oh! Thanks a lot, we'll be back in a gif. What I wouldn't have for a, for, for a lady that calls me big boy. Sorry, I'll shut up, my bad. Man, that was the most loser statement I've ever made. Uh, I feel like I might, okay, there's one. What the fudge? I, <laughs> I, broke, the, I broke the walk cycle. Watch this. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, hi there. Are you here to see Kim and Vance? Yep. Is Kim up now? I'm sorry, but they just left. Kim said she had something very important today. Didn't even finish her chores. Can you believe that, girl? Something important, huh? Weird. I don't remember her mentioning anything about today. Never mind that. Thanks for telling us. You're welcome. And if you do see them, tell them they'll get an earful when they come home. Man. Aubrey, what do you think Kim is up to? Kind of hard to say, but I might have a guess. Why don't we ask Basil what he thinks first? <laughs> Me? Why would I know? Kim has her own life and stuff. I'm sure we'll end up meeting them along the way at some point, so let's just have fun by ourselves for a while. That's right, come on. Let's go do something fun together. I'm betting there's like five. Hey guys, there's something I wanted to talk about with all of you. Can we stop by the hangout spots for a second? Sure, Kale, let's go right now. What? Okay! Sure, man! So, like I said before, Hero is coming to visit today. I wanted to do something nice for him while he's here. What did you have in mind? You see, lately my parents have been bugging him about being single, especially after I got together with Chris. So I thought, maybe we could help him score a date with someone from far away. Um, Kel, I think your heart is in the right place, but... How about we go over your idea from the ground up? I I like the custom Basil sitting sprite. Look at him. Look at him. He's so... He is so... He is so little, little man, little guy. I agree. I think there may be a few too many holes in that plan. What made you reach that conclusion in the first place? Well... 
When I started dating for the first time, I was a little scared of Hiro finding out. I felt like I would be rubbing my happiness on his face. So, maybe if we helped him find someone... But he already knows about you and Chris, right? How'd he react? He actually seemed pretty happy for me. But even though he said it, he was fine with it, some part of me still feels bad. Like I'm leaving him behind, you know? I know exactly what you mean. I didn't talk about it before. I guess time just passed and I forgot, but... I'm a little scared too. Of telling him me and Aubrey got together. I like to believe I've forgiven myself, especially after everything you all did for me. But there's still this devil in my shoulder that makes me think. Do I deserve this happiness? This love? After taking away heroes? Sunny. I also know that feeling pretty well. Okay, all of you just take a breather. Do you think Hero, of all people, would be the kind of guy to resent you for finding happiness? And you, Sonny. Your happiness isn't just yours anymore. And neither are your sins. You don't get to decide by yourself what you do with them. Besides, deserving or not deserving, something doesn't matter. I choose to be with you, and you choose to be with me. That's what matters. Thanks, Aubrey. Man, you really bring out your A-game when it comes to Sunny, huh? What I said goes for you and Basil as well. Except that lovey-dovey stuff. I wouldn't judge Hiro for not being able to move on. I sure wasn't until you all came knocking. But I won't accept anyone else judging you, judging us for moving on either. So if you want to help Hiro get a girl, then screw it. Let's ride! But do it because you want him to be happy, not because you're feeling guilty. You... you're amazing, Aubrey. Yeah, I never expected you to be so eloquent about this kind of stuff. You really lifted me up with that. Just shut up, you guys. Let's focus on that goofy little plan now. So, did you have anyone in mind? Any ideas where to start? Well, that's why I wanted you guys to help me in the first place. I had the idea, but didn't know where to start. I guess that's a very Kel thing, huh? Let's start from the bottom. What do you think is Hero's type? No, wait, before that. How many women in Hero's age range do we know of? Good point. Uh... Basil, how old is Polly? She's 27, but... Uh, are you seriously suggesting that? It's always really nice to him when we visit. I guess we could at least ask what her type is. Who else do we know? I know about Bebe's sister and Angel's sister, but I think that's all. There's Michael's too, but we haven't seen her anywhere. Oh, the bread twin! She and her brother were in the same class as Hero during high school. Might as well ask them too. Okay. Oh! I'm glad I came up here. Hello? Curtsy and Katie seem to have fallen into a pleasant sleep. We can talk to them later. Maybe tease Curtsy for falling asleep holding her girlfriend's hand. <laughs> it's not like that doesn't happen to us, too. But she doesn't have to know about it. That granny's the best contractor we ever had. She's also nice to us and even paid for our lunch. Hey, kids. If you didn't see any stray boxes around town, please bring them to me. We had some trouble transporting stuff for the festival and they got scattered. How? Ours are marked with laid yellow tape. You can't miss it. I'll give you two dollars for every box, straight from Sam Porter's own wallet. Sam Porter's our boss, just to be clear. I ain't paying for these. Found us some lost cargo, eh? Thank you very much. Got you lost, lost box? <laughs> okay, I need, um... Five more of those. There's one. Ever since my big bro shut up on the TV, my dad has been in a good mood, which means I get to play with Sarah more. My eldest son is finally coming back to visit after five months. I still can't believe how good his music has become. Too bad he is so busy with tours and recordings now. Maybe if I had supported him from the start, he would be doing even better now. That's the bare minimum a parent should do. Oh, sorry, you guys caught me rambling. Have a nice day, you kids. Uh, hi! What would you like to- Is that Aubrey I see with you? Smiley, smiley. Uh, I was just about to leave. You guys can buy whatever you want while I wait some- Not so fast! You still haven't paid for that candy tower you broke. I told you it wasn't me. The, the thingy that held it up broke on its own. Let's leave, Aubrey. If you're not welcome somewhere, then neither am I. Hey, at least hear my proposal. I need this big bag of candy delivered to a customer. If you can do that, I'll lift your ban. Smiley, smiley. What makes you think Aubrey will do that? You're so mean to her. Aubrey? Fine, I'll do it. 
Good. The customer's name is Carlos, and he already paid for it. He lives in the house at the end of the upper left street. Oh, Sonny's house! Wait, upper left is where I live. That means my old house. Seems like you know the way. Get to it, Smiley Smiley. Why? And for what? Oh, hi, guys. What's up, baby? What are you up to? I wanted to check out Mike's family stand, but I also ended up buying some juice. To be honest, I was hoping he would be the one working here. Nothing against his brother, I just hoped we would be able to hang out a bit. Hey, other Mart seemed pretty empty when we stopped by earlier today. Maybe you can stay with him at the bakery. I wanted to, but those weirdo fruit brothers were blocking the way. Maybe I could try the back entrance he showed me. Oh, I know the ba about the back entrances. Curtsy took me there once. Curtsy, is that the girl from the candy store? I saw her and her girlfriend there a few times. They were kissing once. It made me and Mike really flustered. Eh? But haven't you and Michael kissed too? Well, well y y yes, but it's weird seeing other people do it. I know what you mean. Don't worry. Yeah, Ari gets flustered, like, super easily. One time, me and Chris were... You can stop right there, Kel. Uh, well, anyways, it was nice seeing all of you. Let's do a big hangout again soon. Usually, dear Daphne would be helping me with stuff like this. But her most important appointments take precedent. Oh, sorry. I got distracted. Ahem. <clears throat> Do you want some bread? You guys sell basils? Basils? <laughs> basils? <laughs> yes. I'll take one, please. Basil got a bagel. He paid for it with his own money and immediately took a bite. Hmm. <laughs> is it that good? Oh, it, yes, it is. S sorry. I forgot to ask if anyone wanted a bite. Don't worry about it, dude. I ate before coming here. Me and Kel also ate a pretty big breakfast, so don't mind us. Thanks, guys. I kind of rushed mine, so I'm still a little hungry. You know, I once read in a comic that bread makes you fat. You guys think that's true? What? No way! Why would it? It's not even a candy or anything like that. Well, it does have a lot of carbohydrates and gluten, so I'm pretty sure it can make you fat. I can hear you guys. The, um, what's his... The flower boy is right. His name's Basil. Basil is right. Since our family makes and eats a lot of bread, we've amassed great knowledge regarding this kind of stuff. Just do some exercise every now and then, and it shouldn't be a problem. That's good to know. Thank you. Say, Bowen, you act pretty differently when you're sis and sis... Dude, can I, like, speak words? Sis isn't around. Yeah, at first I thought your family was kind of weird, but you and Michael are actually pretty chill. <clears throat> Ignore this idiot. Point is, thanks for the answer. It was fun talking to you. You're welcome. Thanks for being dear Michael's friends for so long, even when he was such a twerp. Man, twerp doesn't even come close. He was such a... Ahem! As I was about to say, he is a good friend. I'm glad things are going well for all of you at home. Good luck with the stall. Thanks. Come by if you want some bread. Hey there, want to buy some juice? No thanks. We wanted to ask what's your type, you know, of boyfriend and stuff. Is this some kind of joke? It's for a friend of ours. He's older and has been single for a while now, that's all. Hmm, I see. Okay, here's an idea. Help me with my juice recipe and I'll tell you guys my type. Fine, what do you need us to do? There are these new juice flavors I want to sell, but I haven't had any guinea pigs to try it out on yet. That's where you come in. Just drink some and tell me what you think of it, but be very descriptive. Sounds good, we can do that. Great, here's the first one. You and your friends tried out the orange pineapple grape juice. Tasted a bit too sweet for you, and the pineapple flavor was too strong. Ah, sorry guys, I hate oranges. There's nothing I can say to help. That's pretty okay. I think it could use less sugar though. Really? I think it needs more sugar. It's too sour from the pineapples. Well, you suggest. Add sugar. Really? Is that all you have to say? Eh, alright then. No! Watermelon Cranberry Lemonade. It tasted a bit bland and watered down. You could mostly only taste the lemon. I'll sit out on this one. I don't really like lemonade. Sorry. What do you guys think? I think there's too much lemon. Nah, she just went overboard with the water. The fruits already got plenty of that, so we'd end up only tasting the lemon because everything else is weaker. Watermelons and other fruits already have plenty of water in them, so adding more ends up milling out the flavor. You should add less. Hmm, I see. That was a decent analysis right there. You and your friends tried out the Apple Strawberry Honey Mocktail. 
You enjoyed it quite a bit, to the point that you can't come up with anything you'd like changed. And maybe you could do with a bit less apple, but that's mostly just because I don't like them. I love honey, so mixing it into the juice was a great idea. I wouldn't mind if there was a little more of it. I do agree that honey is a nice touch, but I think she actually nailed the ratios with this one. Ratios of fruit, water, and honey were perfect, leaving a sweet taste that isn't overwhelming. Oh, a first try bullseye then. That's nice to hear. Alright, here's the final one. You and your friends tried out the eggplant banana vitamin. Wait, what? Eh, who even came up with this? I think it needs some water. Maybe Hero should stay single. Don't ever attempt this again. I don't think anyone should ever put these two things together on a blender again. Hey, come on now, I just wanted to try something new. But whatever, you guys kept your end of the bargain, so I'll do the same. Though, would you mind telling me who you're trying to get me to hook up with? My brother Hero. He's been single for five years now, so we wanted to give him a push. You're kidding me, right? Hero is like the hottest guy in this dingy town. You could have just started with that. Ah. Though I have bad news for you. Already tried to woohoo him and it didn't work out. More than once, even. You're his brother, right? Are you sure he doesn't maybe play for the other team? I guess this conversation won't go anywhere. Thanks for your answer, though. No worries. Thanks for the free, cute, quality assurance session. Yay! Hey, everyone. I'm doing quick sketches for customers. It's pretty cool, right? Honestly, if it weren't for all of you cheering me on so much, I don't think I would have had the courage to be here right now. So I thought the least I could do was give you all a discount from $10 to $5 a piece. That's so nice of you. Thanks a bunch. D don't mention it. I'm the one who's thankful. I have an idea. Why don't you sketch Sunny and Arby together to commemorate that they started dating? But hey now, don't go deciding stuff for us. That said, I kind of like the idea. Buy a sketch of you and Aubrey? Uh, not now. I really want one. Let's look around for some money and come back. No problem. I'll be staying here the whole day. Hey, Angela, quick question. What's your type? As in, what kind of guy you like? Oh, that's... unexpected. I don't know what compelled you kids to ask that, but you see... I've never met a man who made my heart race as much as the thrill of creation. <laughs> I can't picture myself getting involved with someone when I've yet to produce my magnum opus. What a cruelty of fate to have so many ideas that so little time to put them to paper. I see your point, but have you considered that finding someone you like and experiencing everything that comes along with it could improve your arts? When you're in love, it gives you a new perspective on things. It makes you consider stuff you never thought you'd consider before. Hmm. I am aware that lately my works have been missing something, which I couldn't put my finger on. Very well, thank you for your advice, pirate kid. So you're going to tell us your type now? Ah, right, that. I'm into shorter guys. Bonus points if they are also into artsy stuff. Oh, and black hair is a must. Thanks. Hello there. Wait, is that Aubrey with you? Hello, Mrs. Benson. How have you been, Aubrey? I have some good news for you. Aubrey takes a short breath to calm down. I'm doing great, thanks. What are the news? I managed to enroll you in the next pre-calculus classes for the upcoming school year. I couldn't tell you before because of the summer vacation, but we were lucky to meet here. Really? Uh, I mean, thank you very, very much, Mrs. Benson. Don't mention it. Honestly, seeing the school's pink troublemaker turn her life around like this has been very inspiring. I'm glad I was able to help in whatever ways I could. I'm glad I asked for your help, but none of this would have been possible without a certain someone. Oh, I see how it is. They say love really can change a person. Don't tell the other students. Before I met my husband, I was twice too delinquent you were. I... I see. Thanks for everything once again. Enjoy your summer vacation, kids. Hi, Polly. How's the stand going? Oh, I had to ask Polly a... <laughs> oh, no. Been great. Honestly, I didn't expect to be having this much fun just assembling bouquets and flower crowds. Been the best, isn't it? And so many people already stopped by as well. We might sell out faster than we thought. Oh, on that note, we're running out of the little soil supplement packs that come with the potted plants. Can you stop by the house and grab some more? Sure. We'll be back in a second. What about the other thing we wanted to ask? Hey now, we're not in a hurry. Let's just help her out. Hey, you kids seem pretty dependable. I've seen you help people a few times. Can I ask you all a favor? Sure, what is it? My grill isn't grilling right. Can you believe that? I checked out and the problem seems to be the valve on the propane tank. 
I know Mondo sells valves at Fix It, so I need you fellas to fetch me one. Don't worry about money, just tell him to put it on my tab. <laughs> Seems simple enough. That's because it is, boy! Alright, I have a lot of people to help. A lot of boxes to find. Oh, okay. Aubrey, how are you feeling? About Candace. Like, crap? I... Even when I was trying to turn things around, that woman kept treating me like some punk. And when something bad finally happened... Why? I thought I was over that stuff. Why am I... Aw. It's alright. You can let it out. It's not fair. It's just not fair. I know. We deserve better than that. Thanks, Sonny. I think I'm alright now. Sorry for getting snot on your shirt. You shirt? Oh no. Don't worry about it. My shoulder will always be yours to cry on. <laughs> Basil and Kel over there are just like, oh. How do you feel now? Better. And they just say nothing about it. I, uh, I, there's an achievement to buy every comic, but I don't know if I have the money for that right now yet. Since I've been doing really well at school, my parents let me buy and read as many comics as I want. Sometimes I think about what it would be like to make my own. But I can't draw at all. Don't be discouraged. I'm sure you can get better if you practice. You see, one of my erm um, dearest friends picked up gardening a few months ago. And honestly, she was hopeless at first. But she never stopped trying to learn and improve. With every mistake, she discovered something new and changed her approach. And now she's amazing at it. I'm sure if you just put your heart into it, you'll be able to make something you're proud of. Thanks, mister. I'm feeling a little more motivated now. Hey, since you want to know how to draw, maybe you could ask Mincy for some tips. She has, like, books and books about autonomy and perspective and stuff. You're good at studying, right? Maybe if you treat drawing like a school subject, you can get the fundamentals down first. I... I never thought of it like that. I just assumed I had to take the image in my head and try to copy it. Thanks a lot, misters. When I get home, I'll try sketching something. Maybe I could ask Mom for some new pencils. Hey, shopkeep. Can we check out the fireworks? Name's Pedro, you know. But sure, I'll get the pamphlet for you guys. We need a permit for some of these, so I can't go letting anyone grab them willy-nilly. There you go. The pamphlet presents you with a few options. Which one will you pick? I want to be as cheap as possible. Let's go with the normal one. It should be less trouble than the more extravagant options. A prudent one, eh? That makes my life easier. I'll grab it for you guys. This way I have seven extra dollars. Since the pizzeria is closed for now, I wanted to shop stop here to listen to some music. I think I'll go with the Lost in Bollywood by System of Dr Downer next. Hmm, but Forever Long by the Foo Fighters is really great too. Foo Fighters? Jojo? I'm telling you, brother, just sell some of your fruit to the juice maker. It's faster and you make a whole day's worth in just one sale. You traitor, have you seen how much sugar she puts in those juices? She's ruining all your fruit. Oh, spare me the lecture. Have you even tried it? Even your dang oranges taste good when you make them into juice. There you go, bad-mouthing my oranges again. And here I thought that when you called saying you wanted to make up, it seemed too invested in arguing to let you into other mark. What a shame. Man, I don't think me and Hero ever came close to arguing like these two. It is pretty uncomfortable to watch, especially when the oranges guy is clearly in the wrong. <laughs> what? No way! It's obviously the apple guy's fault. Are you serious? Did you even pay attention to what they said? The apple guy is clearly having an idea that was good for both of them. Well, he clearly didn't stop to think of his brother's feelings either. But guys, let's not fight over other people's arguments, okay? Why don't we ask Sonny what he thinks? Fine by me! Come on, Sonny, tell him how it is. Which brother is right? Try to see both sides. I think both of them are somewhat wrong. The orange's guy shouldn't dismiss what his brother says like that. But the apple's guy is also really bad at getting his point across. He won't get far insulting the other guy and getting angry. Instead of trying to reach a mutual understanding, they just keep repeating what they believe without hearing each other. That was a great read, Sonny. A banana guy? I didn't know you had gotten this good at dealing with conflict even though it's conflict twice removed from you. Thanks, I learned a lot from my therapist. Always the voice of reason, huh? I guess I just remembered one of the reasons why I fell in love with you in the first place. Thanks. Even though you didn't side with Aubrey, I still feel like I lost. Wait! No! Oh, I've seen the fish lady feed them fish scraps and leftovers sometimes. Maybe we could ask her for some. 
Say, do any of you speak Japanese? Sonny, you said your family was from Japan, right? My grandparents on my father's side are from Japan, but... She's speaking Chinese, Aubrey. Eh, <laughs> you got that one super wrong. Guess Aubrey doesn't know much about foreign cultures, huh? Oh, God! <laughs> Gallete Vendetta! <laughs> Wait, since when did you know how to curse in Spanish? I learned that one specifically to curse you, actually. Um, guys, let's focus on getting these fish leftovers, okay? Leftovers? Yes, please. You got fish scraps. Meow, meow! You gave fish scraps to the cat. Quackity? Okay. Okay, there's only one more lost box. Hey, we know you're busy with that, but can you open up Fix It for a second? The butcher asked us to get him a new valve for his pro. pro. What's it called again? Her pain tank. Oh, Billy did? Well, guess Caesar's restaurant will have to wait a little longer. Not like I was making much progress with this. Ahem, sorry, shouldn't curse around kids. We're almost 18. Wait, really? I'm getting a what? Hey! Alright, just follow me. Say, you wouldn't have to know what type of nozzle his tank has, right? Say what? There was a sticker on the side of the tank. Had some numbers. 7, 20, 150? I don't know what they meant. Nice one, pirate boy. <laughs> that means a 7mm nozzle for a 20 pound tank with a pressure of 150 psi at 30 degrees Celsius. I definitely understood that. I'm Cal right now. That's me. That's me. You got red valve. That'll be $30. Um, the butcher told us to put it in his tab, actually. Well, in that case, tell him I won't take the payment in hot dogs and hamburgers again. Now let's all get out of here so I can crank open that dang door. Say, you have a pretty good memory, Sonny. Thanks. After I moved out and started taking care of myself, I started being able to remember a lot of things pretty clearly. From our talks in the swings to your arguments with Kel. Y you know, I wouldn't mind if you forgot about that last one. I'm gonna remember even harder now. But jokes aside, there's nothing about you that I'd ever want to forget, Aubrey. Sonny? Uh, well, since that's the case, we just gotta make a bunch of good more memory- more- A good more memory sailor, yes. Good grammar, thanks- thanks me. Eh, <laughs> you two might be the most lovely dubby couple I know. If only I had a camera on me. Don't forget Sheen and Karen. I don't think Sonny and Aubrey can beat those two. Is that a challenge? Please don't. Oh, you have it? Thanks a bunch, kids. I'll swap it in a jiff. Alright, look at those flames. That's what grilling meat is all about. Here we go. Some burgers on the house for your efforts. You got four times hamburger. Let's go, hamburger! Oh, there it is. Last one. Yippee. Before we do this, do you guys think, would the new owner let us take a look around the house? Maybe we could at least ask him. Alright, here we go. You can do it, bro. We all know how far you've come already, Sonny. I believe in you. Hmm? Sup? Delivery. Oh, from the candy shop? Thanks a bunch. My wife loves these. You lost bag of candy. W wait I... We... Oh, he's using the focus skill. I used to live in this house. I was wondering if me and my friends could just take a look around. We used to come by here a lot when we were kids. It's a kind of sentimental thing. Ah, now that you mention it, I do remember the tall one knocking on my door once or twice after we moved in. By all means, come on in. Yes! Wow, so this is what the living room turned into. It actually feels pretty cozy. Sure does, especially compared to how barren it was a year ago. Yeah, it's like a different house altogether. Yeah, because the floor tiles are different, man. The dining room, huh? I guess these don't tend to change much from house to house. The table's pretty big, though, and there are so many chairs as well. We all ate so many meals here. Whether it was after school or during a sleepover or a movie night. Yeah, I remember how you'd always give me half of your dessert and Kel would just get jealous. <sighs> you and Hero always got special treatment here. Well, Kel, that was kind of to be expected, don't you think? I guess you're right. The kitchen! Man, Hero and Mari used to cook here so much. House always smelled like a warm meal. Now it smells like... some pretty strong coffee. I always liked tea better, too. Seems like these people have a lot of interesting stuff, huh? 
So many books. They must like games a lot, too. There's so many consoles. Man, I bet this family is loaded. Yeah, but more than that, the whole place feels so lived in now. Like when we, you all, we all used to come here, right? Guitar attached to the wall. Where's the... Wh where's the closet? Where's the closet? <laughs> oh my gosh. The music room, it's kind of messy. So many books. Bag of chips? Potato chips. I'll take a potato chip and eat it. This used to be your parents' room, right? You never really went here much. Me neither, to be honest. But this doesn't look too different from the usual. This one has a pretty nice perfume smell, though. You make a mental note of wearing perfume on your next visit. Perhaps spray some all over your room, too. <laughs> all these mental notes that Sonny's making. This must be his kid's room. With the two beds, it looks a lot like five years ago, don't you think? Yeah. Two more siblings living in this house. Who would have thought? Is it just me, or does this room make his kids seem like big nerds? Eh, every kid is a little bit of a nerd anyways. So, is there anything you want to know? Your children. Oh, my two little twerps, eh? I have a son, about your age, I think. He's 16. I don't know if you guys are 16, too. That tall one could be 20 for all I know. Well, either way, his name is Marcus. I managed to convince my wife to go with that instead of Marcus Elorius Augustus. He's pretty sociable, all things considered. Has a few friends at school. He's really into movies, too. Watches them all the time. You see, when little Marcus was born, me and my wife were still in college pursuing our master's degrees. So we would take him to class with us and sit him with a portable CD player. He ended up really liking it, and now there he is now. A certified movie nerd. Too bad he doesn't like video games as much as his old man. You said there was another one, right? Oh, right, my little Hannah. She's 12, and I'm fairly confident none of you are 12 as well, so I doubt you've seen her around. Dude, it's literally like reverse Sunny and Mari. It's great, I love it. Like I said before, she takes a lot after my wife, which means staying cooped up inside reading piles and piles of books. I swear, she's like a little genius, but the last thing we want is her getting too caught up in trying to be the best at school, or skip grades and things like that. A kid's gotta do kid stuff, you know? Luckily, her brother takes her to play with them and hang out with their friends. I think there's like four of them? They come here every now and then. Also, just like their mom, Hannah doesn't talk much, but she's actually really sensitive and sweet. So if you ever see a little girl with jet black hair staring into your soul, give her a little head pat. About your life. Me? Huh. Very well. I work for a financial firm as a database, database analyst. Pretty boring stuff, but it pays handsomely. I don't know how familiar kids these days are with the thing called the internet, but thanks to it, I get to work from home most of the time. Pretty neat, don't you think? I'm also really into video games and comics. Most of the collections here are either mine or my daughter's. Um, what else? Oh, I'm from South America. Moved here with my parents when I was 14. They unfortunately passed away when I was 17, which sent me into a pretty bad spiral of anger and wanton violence. But thanks to Yui, I managed to put that behind me. So you were like a delinquent? Is that how you got those tattoos? What? No way. I was too poor back then. <laughs> I got them after my son was born. I wanted to be a cool looking dad. My wife loves them though, which is why I ended up getting more and more with time. <laughs> hmm, I think that's about it for me. I did a lot of small little projects throughout my life, but I don't think you kids would care too much about those. Your wife. Ah, my dear, dear Yui, huh? If you don't watch out, I might end up talking about her for hours on end. <laughs> She's a professor at Faraway Community College. Though, we actually graduated from someplace university. <laughs> I'd bet on my non-tattooed arm that she was the best statistician in this entire town. Someplace. That's where I live. <laughs> Sonny lives in some place. Oh, so when you moved out, you went all the way over there? Huh, guess we did a swap then. It's an amazing university. I suggest you at least apply for their scholarships if you can. But now, back to my lovey Yui. We actually met and fell in love during high school. Though this dumb idiot in front of you wouldn't confess until four years later. Some bad stuff happened, we got separated, I turned into a stupid, violent punk for a little while, and then we finally met again in college. 
We were from different courses, mine being computer science and her in mathematics, but we ended up joining hands in quite a few projects. At first, I was still a bit of a <laughs> crap. If it weren't for her, I probably would have not even graduated. Spending so much time with her, learning by her side, that actually made me enjoy college for the first time in forever. Just one year after meeting again, we were already dating. Some more time passed, we graduated, got started on our masters. I proposed to her, only to find out a week later she was pregnant, so we ended up rushing that ceremony a bit. She really loves academics, so I opted to stay at home and raise our son while she was pursuing, pursuing her doctorate. But before she could finish it, she got pregnant. Again. I think that would stop my Yui though. She ended up defending her thesis just six months later than expected. After that, things settled down. We started to focus more on raising our two little nerds and spending time with them. So, in short, Yui is the smartest, most dedicated person I've ever met. It's honestly a miracle she fell for a bum like me. Oh, and last but not least, she's really, really into Roman history. Not in the academic sense, more of just a hobby. Guitars. Ah, those things. I play sometimes as a hobby. I really like music, but I just don't have the talent nor the time to practice. You know that feeling of just wanting to create something? Like when an idea is almost forcing itself out of your head? I get that a lot, so I try to create music. I've created other things too, little text-based text computer games during college, but right now music is where my heart is at. There was this one moment when my newborn was crying in my wife's arms, and she asked me to try and play something for him. Back then, I was even worse than I am now, but I somehow managed to pull off a little lullaby for him. That calm look on his face as he fell asleep. The proud, smug smile my wife had as she said, I told you you could do it. I won't ever forget that. So, even though I'm still not really good at it, the thought that something I made can make someone smile is enough to keep me going. About the backyard. Um, well, it's there. My family's full of nerds, me included, so we stay inside a lot. Last time I checked, this place was pretty overgrown. I think that was August? You know what happened to the treehouse? Huh? There's a treehouse? Hey, there was nothing about it in the papers. But to think that Hannah could have been playing in the treehouse with her friends. I'll try to check it out later. Where is it? Just go straight ahead from the backyard until you reach a clearing. It should still be there. I'll take it you all used to play there then? But it was a lot of fun. It really was. This must be the dreadful place. This place. Never thought I'd be back here again. You weren't with us when we visited the treehouse. Did you come here some other time? Yeah. Well, Nabri brought me here after you moved and before the new owners arrived. It was Kel's idea. They forgot to lock the door, so we took the opportunity to sneak inside and through the backyard, all the way to the treehouse. You know, there were just so many cool things we left there that I thought we should at least bring them back home. But more than that, I also felt that I owed it to them, to her, to come here and apologize. I see. Maybe it's because you're all here with me, or maybe because it's the middle of the day, but I don't feel scared anymore. That sensation in my stomach that made me think I was going to puke. I don't feel it anymore, but I still don't feel really good either. It's alright, Sonny. Just remember that we can leave whenever you want. Yeah, bro, no pressure to stay here. Thank you. The stump. Eh, life really just does find a way. And it grew so fast, too. Beautiful, don't you think? It really is. Thank you, everyone, for coming here with me. Don't mention it. I was a little anxious, but now I'm glad I got to see this. I'll always be here for you, bro. This is the least I could do for my boyfriend, you know? You're right. Let's go back now. This isn't our backyard to play in anymore. Over the last year, the foliage has thickened and the bushes have grown, impeding your way to the old treehouse. I believe to progress the story, I need to get fertilizer from Basil's house, so I'm just gonna do that now. Flowers, you looked around the shelf and got three soil packs. Okay, what? You looked around the shelf and got four, why are they on there? Uh, yeah, all right. Hey, we got at least 10, let's get out of here. Let me finish up. Oh, um, before we go back, can you guys hear me out for a second? We talked about this before, but I was really anxious about today. For a few reasons, actually. And now I just feel silly for worrying so much. That's usually how it goes. 
You remember how it was the day before Sunny arrived here, right? Yeah, but thanks to what you said earlier today, I try to be more positive about this whole flower stand thing. And when we got there, Polly looked so happy. I never thought this little idea I dragged her into would turn out so well. Hey Basil, we kind of touched on this earlier, but what is Polly to you anyways? That's kind of hard to say, honestly. When I was still struggling with what me and Sunny did, I never opened up to her. But she still tried so hard for me. So when we finally moved on, when I finally allowed myself to be cared for and loved, I realized how great of a person Polly really is. I know she's still technically just someone when my parents hired to watch over me and my grandma, but I can't help but think of her as family now. I'm happy for you, Basil. Same here. You deserve it, dude. Yeah, man, you're awesome. Uh, thanks, guys, but, but I'm still not used to so many compliments at once. Let's just go and give these to Polly for now. Give these people the boxes. Here you go. Oh, that's all ten of them? Thank you kindly, kids. We got some of these com com commemorative pins from the company, and I have an extra one with me, so here you go. You got Luden's pin. Apparently the boss is a big fan of this book called Homo Ludens or whatever. That's where he got the idea from. Um, actually, that photo has nine, not ten. Um, um, actually, it's done, Candace. Good. Effective immediately. Aubrey Smith is unbanned from the candy store. Smiley, smiley. You can keep this as a treat. Do come by to buy some candy. Smiley, smiley. You got candy hair clip. Nice. Here you go, Chris. Your fireworks. Thanks, guys. This will do just fine. I'll go back to helping my dad, but let's all hang out again some other day. You're welcome, Chris. Have fun with your folks. Let's go. Okay, let me see if I can go buy every comic. A volume of a Japanese comic titled 20th Century Kids. The cover features a man with a peculiar mask that carries the symbol of a hand with an eye on it. A volume of a Japanese comic titled Full Metal Alchemy. Wait a minute. The cover features a blonde boy with a red coat and a suit of armor behind him. Oh, hang on! Scoot Pilgrim! JoJo's Bizarre Odyssey Steel, Steel Ball Race. The cover features a blonde man with green lipstick. What? A, what the? Strange skin type suits. Okay, I don't know what this is a reference to. Just buy as many as I can now for at least... Uh, wait, that was every comic I can buy? What about this? Oh, sorry, fellas, can't sell that one to you. It's rated 18 plus. Oh, come on, we're almost 18 anyways. No can do, that one's unusually graphic. Not like just violence. If that was the case, I wouldn't care too much. I bet you see that in TV all the time. This one is a weird kind of graphic. And I mean weird. Ah, uh, fine, whatever. Didn't look that interesting anyways. Oh man, but uh, hey, at least I bought every comic that's possible. Now I've almost completed every achievement in this mod. Here you go, Polly, the soil supplements you asked for. Thanks a lot, everyone. Things should go even smoother now. Before we go, there's something Kel wants to ask you. It's about my brother, Hero. He's been single for like, a long time, so we're trying to look for someone who might be interested. Oh, oh my, did he ask you to do that? Nah, I just thought it might be a nice thing to do for him. Ah, that makes more sense. I'm flattered that you think I might be a good match for your brother, especially knowing how talented and smart he is. But I'm sorry to say I don't think it would work out. I have nothing against younger guys, but knowing your brother and knowing he's going to med school in another city, it's just too different from the life I live here, you know? Not to mention the hardships of long distant relationships. I'm sure your brother has ambitions and plans, and things he wants to see through to the end. Because I do too, and I just can't picture a boy like him fitting into those. I understand. Thanks for the answer. You know, don't be discouraged. Your brother is still incredibly handsome, and I'm sure he'd make for a great husband. Honestly, if he was at least three years older, I might have given a different answer. Yeah, people say that a lot about him. Miss Polly, you mentioned plans and ambitions and stuff. Got anything in mind? Oh, well, since you asked, I was planning on talking about this with Basil during dinner today, 
but now might be a good time as well. You see, after over three years working at this house and helping care for all those plants, I really took a liking to it. I'm really grateful I got that job as a caretaker. It's the thing that allowed me to get to know Basil and his grandma in the first place. But sometimes I also wonder, is that what I want to do for the future? Y'all will be 18 soon, and if Basil decides to go to college somewhere else, or finds a girlfriend or a boyfriend to live with, then there'll be nothing for me to take care of. So, I decided that when that happens, I'll take my savings and open up a flower shop. Sounds really nice. Yeah, you guys' flowers are the prettiest in town. I bet you could make a killing off of it. I can really see why she couldn't picture Hero being a part of that. He's awful with plants. Hey, I thought I said I wanted to open a flower shop first. That's why I, I wanted to wait until dinner. I was trying to come up with a way to convince you to at least go to college first. Guess we did this a little out of order, huh? But to think that you actually enjoyed helping with you all this time. Thank you for everything, Polly. For taking care of me, my grandma, our plants. I hope I get to be your employee one day. <laughs> I'm grateful to you too, Basil. You're the nicest, sweetest kid I've ever met. I was really concerned those first two years with how closed off and anxious you were. But now, you're like a little brother that I never had. So whenever you come, you become my employee five years from now, or you find something else you love, I hope you get to be happy. Thank you. I hope you're happy too. That was everyone we knew, right? We should sit down again and try to rethink this whole idea. Sorry that it didn't work out, Kel. Do you have any other ideas we could try out? Not really. I just thought since everyone called Hero handsome and stuff, it would just work out first try. Even if Polly or Angelo were interested, we know from baby sister that Hero wasn't. Maybe she just wasn't his type, but... If he actually can't get over Mari, then I'm really sorry for him. I know that if things turned out wrong, it could have ended up the same, or even worse. I really hope that's not the case. Hero deserves to be happy just as much as us. I agree, but also, don't you think we might be making too many assumptions? I still get a bit of cold feet around him, so we haven't talked much this year. I have no idea what his actual feelings about all this are. That's a really good point. Since there weren't many girls around, we didn't even bother to consider if they were his type either. Hill, you're the closest to him out of all of us. Do you have any idea what his feelings are? Do you two talk about love and things like that? We don't, actually. I think it's not even because it's a sore spot for him. We just have been talking less in general lately. When he moved out for college for the first time, I would call whenever I knew he had some free time just to keep in touch. But now, the one who doesn't have much free time is me, actually. With all the training for the championships, class, going out with Chris, hanging out with you guys and my friends from school and the team, I just do so much nowadays that I don't even remember to call him as much. Don't beat yourself over it, Kel. I feel like that's just part of growing up. He also probably has his hands full with his own stuff, right? I guess. Listen, I like the idea of helping him out if he wants it. You guys did the same for me, after all. So why don't we wait until he gets here and ask about it? Might be a good time to tell him about me and Sunny as well. Uh, already? When he found out I was still in love with you, he went on a whole speech about enjoying our youth and accepting our feelings and protecting over ourselves and stuff. In retrospect, it was pretty helpful of him, but I still haven't sorted out my heart yet, so it just made me flustered. Now that you mention it, he did the same with me when me and Chris started dating. I guess that's what he's always been like, huh? Everyone's big brother. Since he was so open to talk about this sort of thing with you two, I'm sure we can ask him about his own feelings as well. Yeah, now that I think about it, this is way better than my plan. When is he supposed to arrive? A little later into the afternoon. We can just go to my place when we're done with the festival and wait there. Sounds good. Maybe we can raid your fridge. Oh, I didn't mention this before, but I have a really important commitment to attend later today. So if he takes too long, I might have to leave you guys to it. Important commitment, huh? I see, I see. Please don't, I'm kind of anxious about it. Sorry, sorry, my bad. You'll do great, okay? I trust you. Eh? Since when do you keep secrets from me? Since that night you stayed over at my place and ate the pudding I was saving for later. I guess that's a fair punishment for my crimes. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. We're at it again. 
Let's just go back to walking around, please. Okay, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> the fish song is still playing. It's okay, honey, I understand. Just at least try to have fun, all right? Stay safe, Henry. Mom, was that Hero on the phone? Yes, he just called to say that the bus he was on blew a tire. What rotten luck. But he's still coming, right? Of course, of course, but he'll be very late today. I don't know if he told you, but apparently Henry has something very important scheduled for later today in the afternoon. So he said he'll be rushing straight to that before coming home. Probably won't be here until it's already night out. I guess he's finally acting his age, huh? For better or for worse. Oh man, and we had something really important to talk to him about. It's fine, Kel. We'll just wait here with you. Yeah, not like there's something else to do anyways. I'm sorry, but I'll have to leave in an hour or so. I guess I won't get to see Hero today. No hard feelings, man. Do what you gotta do. We'll be cheering you on from here. Break a leg! <laughs> Thank you, everyone. 30 minutes later. Dang. No, wait, which snake is it again? Solo this is the old one from the second game. Not to be confused with Solid from the first and second game. You two play some really out there stuff, you know? Eh, just a matter of taste at the end of the day. Anyways, getting back into it, the third one was actually set before the first. Were they playing Solid Snake? <laughs> well, guess that was it from Basil for today. Do you know where he's going? It seemed like you do. Yeah, but I'll wait for him to say it himself. Let him do things at his own pace. I have a pretty accurate guess what this is all about, but I agree we should just leave him to it. He's confessing to Kim. 45 extra minutes later. Okay. Did you guys find the foes in pizza yet? Yeah, just a second. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm bored. Let's go outside again. I agree. Yeah, I knew Hero was going to take a while, but time has really passed. It oh, 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 oh! What? 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 No, oh, it's you guys. I tried the feedback you gave me on the juice recipes. I have to say, you're all pretty good at this. All the new flavors sold a bunch, and the customers even complimented me on it. So here we go, a token of my appreciation. I don't want to brag, but that might as well be my best one yet. You got premium juice. If I give the premium juice to... Oh, okay. You take a sip of the premium juice. It's delicious. Give me some, too. From the look on your face, it must be pretty tasty. Aubrey also takes a sip. You ponder for a second the fact you two just shared an indirect kiss, before remembering all the direct kisses you've already shared. It's amazing! It is! It's- oh yeah, we're go- we're do <laughs> we're doing the classic Sunny talks about food. I want Mincy to make a sketch of me and Mike so bad. She's so talented. I bet he'll look just as handsome on the paper. Oh yeah, I never- I never bought a sketch! Frick, dude. Ah, and it was Dad's favorite, too. Oh, uh, sorry, just thinking out loud. Say, don't you happen to have a pair of steel earrings on the ground anywhere? With a little triangle engraved at the front? I borrowed them for my dad, but they fell somewhere along the way and I didn't notice. He likes them a lot, too. Wait, your parents let you wear earrings? That's so cool, Maya would never do that. Thanks. My dad says I can have whatever style I want, as long as I don't get anything permanent like tattoos until I'm 18. And also, can't look cooler than him when we all go outside together. What? He's very adamant about that one. <laughs> That's an interesting rule. How does he even enforce it? The thing is, he doesn't. He just keeps saying that he still looks cooler. Mom and Hannah agree with him every time, too. Eh, not gonna lie, your dad s does sound cool. Don't say that in front of him, it'll get to his head. Speaking of his head, please tell me if you find those earrings. I've already looked everywhere around the park, but they might be near the supermarket or my house. I'd go looking there myself, but I have to watch over my little sister. Sure, we'll stop by if we find anything. I'm so happy Hannah came to play with us today. Even though she doesn't talk much, everyone loves hanging out with her. The girl seems to stare into your soul. The girl looks happy. Autism to autism communication. I'm glad Curtsy got the day off. We had so much fun at the festival. She even bought a sketch of us from that Mincy girl. Them friends of yours are at the makeout spot. 
Dang it, that buzz cut chick basically kicked us out. Hey, it's called the Hangout Spot. Where'd you even get that name from? I've seen you and the pirate by yourselves there a bunch of times. Don't act like it don't make sense. TV and that jock boyfriend of his also call it that. Mm, just call it the hangout spot. No need to be gross about it. Kinda hypocritical of you, don't you think? But whatever. <laughs> okay, real quick, I wanna check if I can buy that sketch. I'm gonna load that previous save I have. We got lovely sketch. Aw, that's cute. Oh, this is a cutscene. Wait, is that? Holy cow, bit Pipe down, moron! You didn't have to hit me twice. What should we do? Do we just leave? We definitely should, but... I need to know if Kim will pull this off. Well, wait, let me catch up. Since when does Kim wear dresses? Why is she on a date with Basil? <laughs> I'll have you know I helped her pick out that dress. From what Basil told me, he and Kim have been getting along really well for a few months now. She's surprisingly nice to him. Yeah, remember when Sunny visited for the first time and I got the hooligans to apologize to you guys? Ever since then, those two have been inching closer and little by little. Really? I didn't even notice. Basil didn't tell me either. Don't beat yourself over it. Unlike me, they are good at hiding it. Also, Basil only told me he liked her less than a month ago. He's probably been holding back on this for a while. I guess it makes sense. Still kind of hard to wrap my head around. What are they doing? Oh my gosh, Kim is going for it. Sonny, quick, can you read lip? You can read lips, right? What are they talking about? I can, but I need to focus really hard. <laughs> this is the excuse we get for reading the dialogue. And it made me, you know, happy that you never stopped trying to teach me. Getting to see those flowers grow and bloom, knowing all the work it takes, felt nice. That's what gardening is all about. Other than my grandma and Polly, I don't think anyone else was as earnest as you when it came to that. And you improved so much in just a few months, too. I hope we get to see more of our beautiful flowers bloom. Uh, our flowers, huh? Sounds nice. Say, Basil, you mentioned these rain flowers to me once. And I thought they looked really pretty. You know if they have any cool meaning in that language of flowers of yours? Of course. From what I've read, they can mean a yearning for forgiveness, a promise to remember someone, or a confession of love. I see. Anyway, I got you these. I couldn't find the flowers themselves, but I managed to get the seeds. L let's plant them together, okay? Thank you so much. Let's find a nice pot for... Th wait, wait are, are these rainflower seeds? D does that mean... The flower language thing that you just said. I read it in one of your books the last time I was at your place. The, that, that was when I decided I wanted to give you one. D do you really mean it? Would I be here right now looking like this if I didn't mean it? I feel bad for the way I treated you, and all those moments we spent in the garden or hanging out. I won't forget them. And more than that, I... I love... Come on, Sonny, what are they talking about? I'm getting curious. Why, why does he look like that? Kim was about to confess, but I missed it. Oh, sorry about that, then. Guys, guys, shut up and look! Sing. You're kissing. Congratulations, Basil. You deserve this. Kim, too. I'm proud of her. I wonder if this is how they felt when we started going out. Yeah, I think now I get why everyone teased me so much for not taking the initiative. Guys, I can't keep up with this. Too much at once. Sonny, let's take Kale out of here before he melts down. We can explain on the way. Besides, I'm pretty satisfied with what I've seen. I agree. Let's get going. Can't believe he's really been teaching her gardening all this time. It's like I told you, dude. Kim's a maiden at heart. Most girls are when they meet the right person. And I know Basil loves the company as well. He's been lonely for a long while now. I guess I haven't hung out enough with Kim to notice, but as long as Basil is happy, I don't mind it. I do get how you feel, though. When you showed up one day out of nowhere and told everyone you and Chris were dating, I was just as shocked. Kittens. Ah, oh, sorry. These cats surrounded me and I got distracted. They're just too cute. I'm waiting for my husband to buy us some more comic books. We read them together every night, but Carlos always falls asleep before me and I... And... Before me and I... Oh, no end up staying up late. His sleeping face is so handsome, I can never bring myself to wake him up. 
Aubrey's sleeping, sleeping face flashes into your mind. You sympathize with this woman. Meow meow. Peering into the restaurant window, behind the advertising papers, you notice a familiar face. Look further. Oh! Oh! No way! Is that Hero? The, the, the thing, the thing he was talking about was a date with, uh, uh, uh it, it was, it was, it, it, uh, yeah. Let's keep it down. That said, I'm not hallucinating, right? How come that happened twice? You were barely ever talked about her. Now I really get how you feel a second ago with Basil. This is hard to believe. Aubrey, do you want me to try reading their lips again? Or should we just leave? I guess it won't hurt to at least know what they're talking about. Maybe we're overreacting and this isn't even an actual date. But if it is, why did Hero never talk about it? I can think of a few reasons, but for now, let me concentrate. The glass makes it harder to read. Don't sell yourself short. I know how well you and Bowen work together, but it shouldn't stop you from trying to spread your wings a bit more. You say that, but you're still running away from your dream too. <sighs> I know, it's just... I already spent so much time there and met so many amazing people. I don't think I could let go of all that. It's hard, loving two different things so much and having to choose between one or the other. Though, I feel like the choice is getting clearer and clearer by day, whether I like it or not. Mm-hmm, <clears throat> you see, Henry. We may deny it, but we are both yet uninformed. Please don't do the bread voice while we're on a date. It makes me feel weird, like Bone is going to pop out from behind the corner and finish your sentences. So it really is a date. Let us not bring dear brother into this. Continuing, we are both still closer to dough than to bread. Soft, supple, and malleable, like your belly. <laughs> Please don't. We can still be shaped into baguettes or sourdough, but with a little more butter, we may become croissants. <laughs> the possibilities present themselves before us, but we can already smell the oven. There is only so much time left to choose, dear Henry. When you put it like that, does it mean you have already made your decision? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess I just wanted you to give me a bit of a push. After the second day of the festival, once everyone's calmed down a bit, I'll tell my parents. Well, out of the two of us, I'd bet on your parents being easier to convince. I mean, you're still going to be a baker like they raised you to be, just in a different city. Don't underestimate their commitment to tradition. <laughs> it's like I told you, that bakery has been in our family for a few generations now. At least you have Bowen and the Maverick to share that weight with you. If one or the two of them stay here, it shouldn't be as much trouble for you. Dear Michael doesn't call himself that anymore. Cut the boy some slack. But yes, you're right. I'm actually counting on that. But I'm not sure how dear Bowen will react to me wanting to leave, but Michael has a good head on his shoulders now. And that baby girl, she says she's willing to help him out with work. That makes me certain she'll be part of the Baker family in no time. <laughs> I truly believe I'll be leaving this town in good hands. But back to what you said, from the way you phrased it, I'd think you'd have no one to support you back home. What about your dear Kel? Can't he share the weight with you as well? Well, Kel is... Sonny, what are they talking about? I think it's about what they want to do in the future, but I don't have much to go off of. They aren't flirting too much though. Much more amazing than my parents give him credit for. He cares about everyone around him so much. And it's like the room lights up when he's there. When things were at their worst for us, he was the one reaching out to me. That's why, if my parents are going to pile their expectations on someone, I'd rather it be me. I know Kel will become something incredible one day, so I want him to fly as far away as he can. I don't want anyone to hold him back. Hmm. You truly are one of a kind, you know that, right? You'll make for the greatest addition to the bakery family yet. <laughs> well, I mean... But as commendable as your actions are, have you considered what dear Kale wants? Would he be able to enjoy flying high while you remain in the cage? And if he doesn't leave the nest the way you expect, will you be able to accept that your sacrifices amounted to nothing? Would you two be able to face each other knowing that? Also, if you wish to marry me, you'll have to work on your bakery metaphors. <laughs> Less birds, more bread. <laughs> I'll just ignore that last part. But yeah, when you put it like that, now I feel like I'm the one putting expectations on him. Even though all I want is for him to be happy, and not to have to deal with that pressure. Hell, when we meet up with Hero, be sure to give him a big hug, okay? Oh, sure. That's usually how it goes anyway. So, my dear Henry, have you decided if you want to be a baguette or a croissant? 
I still don't know what each one is supposed to mean, but I'll finish what I started and then we can go into the oven together? You see Daphne's poker face break into a smile for the first time during this entire conversation. We <laughs> still have a lot to learn, but that will suffice for now. I'll take that as a compliment, thank you. Now to change the subject, are you going to finish that slice? I think I'm done with pizza for today. I'm pretty full as well, we should pack it up. I know you and Bowen have the same taste for everything, maybe he would like some. Hey now, you heard me ramble about bread for two hours and even treated me to this dinner, you take it home. I'm sure dear Kale will enjoy it. You're right about that, he loves anything that's loaded with carbs. Then he'll be a steadfast customer of our new bakery. <laughs> Have to wait and see, but I'm sure he'll like the idea. Do tell me about your family's reaction. I'm quivering with anticipation. You are impressed by how much Daphne is, in fact, not quivering. <laughs> She's holding still as a statue. <laughs> Will do. Sonny, we've been standing here for ten minutes. What's going on with them? It's mostly what I told Kel. Daphne mentioned opening a bakery in another city, and Hiro seems conflicted about something. I guess it's about college and something else he wants to do. Can you tell if they're actually going out or not? It's still hard to believe I'm seeing Mike's sister anywhere near a man. If they are dating, they're being pretty nonchalant about it. Nothing like the blushing mess Kim and Basil were. Or me and you. Guys, looks like they're about to leave. We should bounce too. Let's hide somewhere and see what they do next. You notice something glinting in the grass. Oh, I found the person's thing. Nice, okay. Looks like they're talking again. Can you help, Sonny? <laughs> we might have a bit of a problem. <laughs> the smell of Aubrey's three-in-one shampoo is making your heart flutter more than usual. She uses three-in-one? Oh my gosh. You wouldn't be able to focus on reading their lips, even if you could see them. Keep it down, maybe we can hear them. And that's the only secret dear Bowen keeps from our parents. And Michael. Are you sure you should be the one telling it to me then? You'll be part of the Baker family eventually. I'd rather have you in the know. Besides, dear brother thinks pretty highly of you, though he may not show it. I... I see. It's a little hard to read you two, but I guess he is always nice to me too. If you wish to inquire further, my invitation stands. He's probably home by now. Thanks, but I still really want to spend time with my family today. Especially considering our old friend Sonny is back in town. I promise I'll make it up to you the day after the festival. Your proposal is acceptable. Now let us make our way home, my fair suitor. Please don't call me that. Hero and Michael's sister. Talk about a curveball. Yeah, don't tell me. But the fact that Hero's going out with someone again is a good thing, right? I'd say so. We ran around earlier today trying to accomplish exactly that. And it was one of the people you guys had in mind, too. Yeah, I guess I'm still just a little sad that he never talked about it. That goes for Basil, too. I get how you feel, but listen here. Just because we're friends doesn't mean we'll be able to talk about everything with you. And that doesn't make you any less of a friend, either. Aubrey <laughs> Aubrey's right, you're always reaching out to us and trying to cheer everyone up. Even if we don't take your hand in that moment, we still appreciate that you tried. So don't beat yourself up, dude. Let them open up at their own pace. I sure wish you guys had let me take it slow. Hey, if it weren't for us, you and Sonny wouldn't have been walking around town holding hands and kissing every day. Hell, that's not the point. I know, what you guys said makes sense. When we get home, I'll tell Hiro that if there's anything he wants to get off his chest, we'll be here for him. That's the spirit. Meanwhile, I'll pretend I never heard what you just said. You're lucky I took the nails out of my bat. <laughs> um, Aubrey, I think my knees are about to give out. Huh? All right, here, I'll help you up. Basil, did you see Hero pass by here? We did, actually. Me and Kim were about to leave the park when we saw him walking around with that Baker sister. I was too su surprised to even greet him. Ah, welcome to the club. Now, what about you, Kim? How are you doing? Uh oh me? I guess I'm a little light-headed right now? It's definitely because I haven't had any suits today. Yeah, that's right. Low blood sugar level or whatever. So, um, I've got to stop by Other Mart for some stuff. Why don't you nerds and Basil catch up and I'll see you all tomorrow. Stay safe, Kim. Tell Vance I said hi. Hey now, why are you two in such a hurry? That's right, we don't mind if you take your time. 
<laughs> you two really talk big when you're not on the defensive. I, I don't know what you two are talking about. Anyways, bye guys. Bye, Basil. Call you later. Oh, there she goes. And other Marv is not even that way. I guess it wasn't, huh? Hey, Basil, if you ever feel like talking about what's going on between you and Kim, I promise I'll be here to hear you out, okay? And if you don't, just know that as long as you're happy, I'm happy. Thanks, Kel. I'll take you up on that soon enough. By the way, just so we're all on the same page, us three just stopped by Gino's and... One exposition scene later. I'll be honest, the fact that he's dating again is a big weight off my shoulders. I agree. Let's try and catch up with him. There's still some things I want to get off my chest. Ah, thanks a bunch. I knew you guys seemed like nice people. Dad always told us stories about how much this means to him, so I was kind of freaking out pretty bad. What kind of stories? I bet it's something pretty interesting from the way you talk about him. Well, since you asked... Mom and Dad met once they were in high school and again during college. They say they were already in love when they were teens, but took too long to realize it. When he started college, Dad was going through some pretty awful stuff. Mom gave him these earrings a few months after meeting him there. She says they had a pretty bad argument the day before about Dad wanting to quit and leave everything behind. So she came to him with these and said, If you actually love me now as much as you did back then, put these on. If you leave, I'll rip your ears off to take them back. <laughs> pretty intense, don't you think? Dad says that was the most serious Mom ever looked. Honestly, it's kind of hard for me to even imagine that when both of them are so goofy all the time. I barely remember them even scolding me when I was younger. Anyways, I'll be here with my family tomorrow if you want to meet them. I'll be sure to buy you guys something as thanks, too. Ah, wait. Now that I think about it, while I was looking for Dad's earrings, I found this. It doesn't fit my style or my fingers, but it looks nice. You guys can have it as well. You got pink ring. Oh, this looks really nice. Thank you. I think I already know what I'll do with it. What did he give you, Sonny? Uh, I'll show you later, but I think you'll like it. Oh man, I wanted to see it too. That's the achievement! Hero! Hell, everyone! I missed you guys! Sup, dude? Took you long enough, bro. Sorry about that. The bus blew a tire, and when I got here, there was something else I had to take care of. But now we're all here. Let's go home. I'm sure we have a bunch of stuff to catch up on. Sounds good. Where's the pizza? And then the defibrillator made this giant spark, and the guy operating it ended up having to pay a lot to fix it. He sure got to meet some interesting folks at college, huh? Henry, you sure you don't want to eat anything else? Yes, Mom, thank you! Well, that was mostly everything from me. There's just one more thing. Um, Hero, there was also something I... Me and Aubrey want to tell you first, if that's okay with you. Of course, Sonny. I kind of guess something might have happened since you two have been talking so much today. Eh, is that so? I guess I got used to speaking more. Anyway, what I wanted to say is... Me and Aubrey are dating now. Yeah, it's been almost four weeks since we confessed. Seriously? That's so sweet. I'm really happy for you. We never said it out loud, but... Me and Amara used to joke about rushing to get married, or else you two would do it first. Eh, is this about the time with the red ring pops? Yeah, that and the hundred other things you and Sunny got up to. I'm sure she would be proud of you two for moving on. Us living our lives, that's what she would have wanted, don't you think? Ah, uh, but don't let me drag the moon down. I'm really happy that you're finally together. So, how far did you two get? Are you two holding hands already? Well, about that. I guess Hero underestimated you two, huh? They have been kissing every day since they started dating. <laughs> Are you okay, Hero? Took me and Daphne more than a month. Daphne? Uh oh. Um, slip of the tongue. Well, might as well tell you now. Daphne, the girl from the bakery. We've been seeing each other for a few months now. She's really earnest about baking and helping her family. But now she wants to open up her own shop in the city where I'm living in. And I offered to help her out. So when I graduate from college, I'll join her at the bakery. I've always loved cooking more than... almost more than anything else. So I want to try and doing it for a living for a while. That's so cool, bro. Did you tell mom and dad yet? N not yet, so keep it down a bit. Eh, I guess that might catch them a little off guard now that I think about it. Either way, we're really happy for you and Daphne. 
I think you probably deserve happiness more than anyone else. At least more than... Never mind, sorry. Oh. This is about Mari, isn't it? I guess it's on me for never really opening up to you guys after everything that happened. After we talked it out, I left feeling more empty than before. Even though I didn't show it, I think I was clinging to the past as much as Aubrey and Sunny were during those three days. I had tried really hard to think about what it meant to be me. She was such a massive part of my life. That shouldn't change the fact that it's still my life, right? I ended up thinking back to the times I'd cook for all of you. Or when I'd make something for my college friends or even my professors. I loved those moments so much. The sight of everyone's happy faces when they took a bite was the best thing ever. I know that if I became a doctor or a surgeon, I could probably end up even saving lives, but... I'd like it even more if I could make people happy with my food. Hey, it's not like you can't do both. If you get people to eat healthy by making the food good, you'd be saving them too, right? Hell's right. If there's someone out there who could make anything taste good, it's probably you. You guys give me too much credit. Though, that's also exactly what Daphne said. Say, how did you and her end up meeting anyways? Seems like she likes you a lot. It's a little anticlimactic, but... One day while I was visiting, I decided I wanted to learn Pet Rock to play with Kel, so I asked her and Bowen to teach me. We used to go to high school together, so they were already like acquaintances. Those two really are fun after you get to know them. Why did you never mention them? I'll be honest, everything's happening so fast I just forgot. You just said it took a month for you guys to start kissing. Feels like our first proper date was a week ago. That, that you dick contradicted yourself! Sorry for keeping you in the dark so long, Kel. I'll try to call her home more often. S since everyone's opening up, there's also something I wanted to say. Me and Kim started going out today. W wait, you two? Sunny and Aubrey were always a given, but... No, sorry, you just caught me off guard. Congratulations, Basil. I'm happy for you. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Say, Basil, what does your first kiss taste like? Um, a bit like taffy, I think. No, wait! I never mentioned kissing her! H how did you- Basil, too. And on the first date! Hero, are you okay? Daphne, I'm sorry for refusing your advances. <laughs> Next time I'll- Guys, I think we broke Hero. <laughs> oh, he died. Sorry, I didn't expect him to react like that. To be honest, I get him. You guys move too fast. Sunny, you've been sleeping on Hero's bed, right? What are you gonna do now? You have mine. I'll just sleep on the couch. I wish I could invite you guys to my house for a sleepover. There's a lot of things I want to talk about, but me and Polly need to get ready for the second day of the festival. Then why don't you sleep at my place again, Sonny? I'm sure Bum Bun would love the company. As much as I would. Oh, sure. I think I left my pajamas there last week anyways. No complaints from me! Does that mean you guys are leaving already? Yeah, I'd say me and Sunny are ready to clock out. Same here, and Polly is probably tired of waiting for me at home. Let's meet up again tomorrow. Alright, good night everyone. See you tomorrow. A short walk and a cold shower like cold shower, nah. Sorry about the cold water, Sunny. I hope it wasn't too bad. It's the middle of summer, so I managed to pull through. But now I'm worried about how you've been dealing with it during winter. I usually just go to Kim's if I can't handle it. Thanks for worrying, though. Makes me happy. Don't mention it. Anyways, are you ready to clock out? I think I've almost had enough of watching Bun Bun sleep. Before we go to sleep, there's something I wanted to give to you. When we helped out that kid on the swings, he gave me this. I was hoping I could buy one myself when we were older, but... Well then, I think it'll look just as beautiful with this. You gave Aubrey the pink ring. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Sunny! It's so pretty, too! I'm glad you liked it, even though it's something we just kind of stumbled upon. Do you really think there's a world where my boyfriend gives me a ring and I don't love it? I mean, did you forget our little ring pop ceremony when we were ten? That was Mari's idea. She just wanted to tease me. Mission accomplished. You were as red as a tomato back then. Not like I was any different, though. Fair enough. I guess we've never changed in that regard. That's right, come here, my tomato! <laughs> Back to you, my strawberry. Aww? They're so cute. 
You and Aubrey managed to let go of each other and lay down on the mattress. Sleep tight, Sonny. I'll be right here if you need me. You feel Aubrey placing her hand on top of yours. Her new ring makes for a novel sensation against your skin. You wonder if this bliss will last forever. Aubrey, do you think we'll be alright? I hope so. Why? Is something worrying you? It's just that I'll have to go back home in a few days. I feel like it gets harder to say goodbye every time I do it. Getting to spend every day with you and the others. Doing boyfriend and girlfriend stuff together. Feeling the sun and the wind on my skin. I'll miss that. So, so much. I... I know. It's the same for me. Be honest, I've been trying to just push the thought away from my head as much as possible. You might have gotten too used to this precious little life for ours. Even though it's only been a few weeks, I can't imagine not having you by my side anymore. I know it's not healthy, but I can't help feeling like I need you here now. It's just so unfair. It really is. That thing Hero said. I've been thinking about it for a little while. How he had to find out what it meant to be him. That even though Mari was a big part of his life, it was still his life. I'm happy for him, but I don't want to have to do the same. I want my life to be yours as well. But that's not fair to you. Or to anyone else. I know I have to figure this out myself, but it's so hard. You're right. That's definitely not fair to me. Give me a ring. Saying you want your life to be mine while we're sleeping like this. You are being so unfair to my heart right now. But I also get what you mean. Before I confessed, I was struggling really hard with just seeing myself as someone worth loving. Someone you would love. I ended up jumping from one part-time job to the other, trying to figure out what it meant to be a good, productive person. Can't say I figured it out, but at least I found some new perspectives. Not to mention a bunch of things I learned about myself. I still don't know what it means to be myself either, but I want to figure it out with you. I want that too, more than anything else. But having to be so far apart, do we even have a choice? We're both still 17, not to mention money and stuff. I think we'll just have to push through. As much as I hate that, as much as I wish you could stay here, no choice, huh? I also hate that I have to pull a kale, but let's at least try to stay positive, all right? We managed to get this far, meeting only once a month and talking on the phone every now and then. Heck, now I even have something to show for it. If there's anyone that can do it, it's us. I guess you're right. We've been through so much worse. From now on, I'll try to call at least twice a week. Eh? Not even every day? You're right, every day it is then. I was pulling your leg. All my money would end up going to the phone bill. Oh, I know. Have you used the internet much before? We can send texts through that, and it's cheaper than phone calls. Now that you mention it, I've used to, to listen to music at Kim's place before. I'll talk to her tomorrow. Maybe we'll get you a computer too. I have a laptop at home that I don't use anymore. You just need to go somewhere with internet. What makes you think I won't sell it to buy bus tickets to visit you? You could probably get 10 trips out of that thing, so I wouldn't mind it that much. You know that's nowhere near enough money for me, right? You're right. I underestimate you, did you? I know. How about I get a part-time job too, so I can visit twice a month? You mean it? What jobs do you want to do? I did like 20 different ones this past year. I bet I can give you some tips. I had something in mind, actually. There's a store two blocks away from my apartment. It's kind of like hobbies, but they focus a little more on music and... It took you and Aubrey more than an hour of talking before you both finally fell asleep. However, in the middle of the night, you feel a strange weight on top of you. <laughs> bunny! So fluffy, so cute, my bun bun. You feel Aubrey's hand lazily and clumsily pet your back. My sun bun. <laughs> Aww. Oh my gosh. As the events of that day come to an end, you stop reminiscing. Now that I think about it, maybe when Aubrey gets here, we could go to Hero Daphne's Bakery. Sorry, Hero and Daphne and Bowen's Bakery. Wacky.
Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. And thanks as always to the channel members you see here for pledging further support so I can keep making content like this. If you want to help me with the continued success, hit that join button to get new videos early and exclusive community posts. Next video will hopefully come out faster than this one did, so uh, see you next time. It'll probably be Hydro's Fever Dream if I had to guess.